Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for part two of the Q&A, so let's go ahead and get this started. All right, first question. What have you been doing lately to work on your deadlift grip weakness? I started doing the same stuff I was doing before, right? You guys see it. I do, and again, by the time this video comes out, there could be changes. But uh, what I've been doing is... All axle bar rowing. I've gone back to inverted rows exclusively with the axle bar. Uh, I don't just play with three sets. I make sure I get five full sets on my upper body workouts. And I pretty much take them more or less to grip failure. Right? And I try to even that last rep if I can not just squeeze the bar for a moment until I'm almost slipping out of it. Alright? So that's a big one. That axle bar. Uh, I've been doing double overhand axle grip deadlifts. And you guys see that stuff on camera. You see that on camera, so it's all there. Uh, what I'm also going to do, because I'm a stronger, way stronger and faster at conventional deadlifts than I am sumo these days, especially in terms of just the ability to move it quick. Um, I'm gonna do more and more conventional speed pulls with a lot of band tension. All right, we're not gonna even play with the, the 30 or 33% type band tension. We're gonna take that band tension up it needs to be up higher than that. So, I mean, what I'm going to tend to do is see see how high I can get it and still keep all my rigging uh, sticking to the floor okay. And I'm going to keep working those heavy, heavy bands. Keep working that heavy band tension for uh, conventional speed pulls because that is tr a tremendous grip trainer. It's a tremendous grip trainer. Uh, but again, the fat bar work. Uh, and again, try to even do if I have to more pressing with the fat bar. But using that axle bar or fat bar, whatever you want to call the axle bar, technically, what it was when I bought it. It's the name on my particular one, the Titan one. All that axle bar work helps a lot, especially because there's no knurling. It's not only is it the big, fat, almost two-inch bar, it's the, the smooth finish on it. Right? It's very smooth. That trains grip tremendously. Then I'm doing pinch blocks on a lot of my off days. So I do some pinch block work. Occasionally I do it on main training days, but my three restoration days, um, so that people have some idea of what I do there, I tend to do sled work. I do reverse hypers. I do uh, ab work, which is like hanging leg raises. I'm going to tend to do pinch block work, all that stuff. I also do plyos on those days a lot of times. So, I mean, realistically, my, my off days from training, my restoration days are probably, by many people out there, standards would be full workouts, right? by a lot of people's training <laughs> experience and level they my restoration days might actually exceed their work capacity and strength for a main workout but the restoration so i tend to do pinch block work on those days also so again i'm, I'm working the pinch blocks working the fat bar and again we're doing a couple different movements with the fat bar there we're doing different things to try to really really hammer that grip because again at this point in the game i feel like it's the rate i'm progressing on everything else my deadlift is going to get really really big if i can grip the bar and i don't have big hands and i have short thumbs so people probably figured that out they've noticed that so Again, uh, grip is always going to be a limiting factor for me, I think, at this point, especially if I can keep my hamstrings and, and, and back strong. All right, next question. What is the most common injury you see from weightlifting? Shoulders, bicep tears, back, etc. Ooh, that's a good question. So, what do I personally see that I've ex have noticed talking to many, many, many people over my lifetime at the age of 43? Shoulder, 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 knees, shoulder, shoulder, knees, back, shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. I hear more shoulder injuries than anything else. More shoulder injuries than anything else. Now, why is that? Because most guys are upper body bros. Most people are upper body bros and then they put a heavy focus on the bench press and they don't put a heavy focus on their upper back and rear delts and things. Okay. That's usually what it is. We also see really, really bad benching. You see a lot of elbow flare. We see a lot of benching high on the chest. So, so it's no wonder that we see continual shoulder injuries. People just bench press incorrectly. And which also kind of leads to the idea by many people that the bench press is a bad and a dangerous exercise. Right? The bench press is a dangerous exercise. 
Well, no. Performing it incorrectly is problematic. And there's also a muscle balance issue. We also see a lot of shoulder issues from chin-ups and pull-ups. There's good data on there out that at this point. There's a reason I don't even mess with them. They hurt my shoulders. But we, we see a lot of that. Incorrectly perform pull-ups, too many pull-ups, too many chin-ups. Um, what have I seen the most in the powerlifting world? Bicep tears. Yep. I've witnessed multiple bicep tears. I was actually roughing at a meet where a guy tore his bicep. Like I've actually seen it happen firsthand in comp. Again, we know how to prevent these things. That's one reason I discuss this stuff. Uh, knees are another big one. Knees are massive. We see a lot of knee injuries. Why? People who do too much Olympic squatting and they don't train their hamstrings. Okay. Let me let me put that back in perspective for you too much olympic squatting and not enough hamstrings okay we see that we see what that causes it causes knee inflammation knee problems you could argue about knee wraps with that too but that's a separate topic but it's shoulders knees um Back injuries, I, I haven't seen that many. Like with stuff we hear about on the internet, but as far as people actually hurting their backs deadlifting and stuff, mm, pretty rare. And it's easily fixable with proper training, right? Do your good mornings, do some reverse hypers. Very unlikely to happen, as long as you're not doing touch and go deadlifting. And every back injury I've ever heard of is usually a guy who touch and go deadlifts. That's what causes it. I've said that many times. Put the weight on the ground on every rep. But shoulders are number one. I've seen way, way more shoulder injuries than everything else combined together. Like if I were to take all non-shoulder injuries and compare them to people I've met who have shoulder injuries from training, I would say the shoulder injuries are three to one versus everything else put together. All right, next question and last question of the week. Hi Jason, so I got wrist pain from the gym yesterday. I noticed after maxing on the bench press, but I don't know if that's the cause of it or doing high rep skull crushers is. Well, high rep skull crushers, high rep, are tend to going to be very, very easy on the wrist. So the odds that that actually caused it, very, very, very slim. Uh, if you were talking about elbow pain, I promise you it's the skull crushers, not the benching. Like benching should not hurt your elbows. Okay. Wrist pain. Well, it's time for you to maybe film your benching. You're a regular poster. You post multiple times a week on my Facebook page. You need to film yourself benching and upload it. Let's see what's going on. I promise you, if you're getting that wrist pain, you're not stacking your wrist. You're not stacking your wrist correctly. There are only two appropriate ways for you to grip the bar benching. They are either with a bulldog grip, in which case the bar isn't even in the hands. Okay, You're, It's not in your hands, it is across the wrist bone. At an angle. Or you are squeezing the bar the holy hell out of it and punching the sky. If you are squeezing the bar, if you're doing anything but a bulldog grip and there's any cocking back of the wrist, that is what's causing your wrist pain. You have to stop doing that. You have to stop doing it right now. It's not only going to hurt your wrist, it's eventually going to hurt your shoulders. Let's come back over to the point of not learning how to bench correctly. You've got to pick one of those two. There's no middle ground. There, There is no middle ground for your bench grip. Either you are squeezing the bar as hard as you can because otherwise it's going to break your thumb. If you were to not squeeze it hard, it's going to injure your thumb rolling down. And punching the sky... Or you're going to use a bulldog grip. If you're using anything else, that's what's causing your wrist pain. Number two, uh, you need good wrist wraps. Anyone who's having a history of wrist pain, wrist inflammation, you can't get away with garbage wraps. And I don't mean expensive, because phenomenal wraps are still less than $30. Like the best wraps you can possibly get, the stiffest, hardest wraps, you should still be able to get ships to your house for less than 30 bucks. You're probably using cheap elastic type material wraps. And if you're having wrist 
issues, you know, that's not really going to, that's not going to cut the mustard anymore. You need hard canvas. Uh, I'm using Titan. I believe mine are 36 inch canvas wraps. That's what I'm using these days. They might be 30. I need to double check. I'm forgetting now. But I know they're over at least 30. They might be the 36s. Canvas, not elastic, not a stretchy material. Okay. Probably think that stretchy material is doing something and it may not be. So that might be part of your issue and you, and you just have small wrists. And you're not keeping the wrists, again, stacked enough. Um, and you don't have a good enough wrap. Now, for guys who are talking about, well, I don't use wrist wraps. And then they get wrist pain. Well, we need to go no further. There's your problem. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.